Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 25th, and today we're going to take a look at this system moving through the Pacific Northwest this week, and generally going to bring light precipitation amounts to the lowlands higher for the upper terrain and for mainly British Columbia. Barely qualifies as an atmospheric river coming through here. You know, you wouldn't be missing out on much if you didn't even mention atmospheric river in the same sentence as the system, but it barely might qualify. See some cold air spilling out over the Gulf of Alaska here. This is that cold air that's going to eventually impact areas of California and bring some really much needed rain for Southern California and the Central Valley there through California. Check out the trade winds to Hawaii. If you're flying out there, it should be very nice weather out on the Hawaiian Islands. Intertropical Convergence Zone is always is going on. You can see that system still kind of lingering close to the East Coast here as it just moves off of Florida there. And relatively quiet weather around the rest of the country here and Mexico. So diving right into things here, this is SeaTac. Today is March 25th. The record high for today is only 64. The average temperature is 53. And you can see, see on 1955 on this day, SeaTac got 1.3 inches of snow. 1982, 2.0 inches of snow there on March 29th. So we still can get some snowfall this time of year, but it is very rare. If you look out into mid-April, actually, too, 1972, we got back-to-back -back days with over an inch of snow, probably a couple inches in that event there in 1972. And... I remember this day, April 1st, 1987, I was going to middle school, and I can remember that really warm day, 82 degrees. You kind of remember those really warm days as they happen early in the year. But that was our first ever 80-degree day at SeaTac, and the next one didn't occur until April 11th. So it's getting that time of year we can get a warm day mixed in here, although we don't see that in our future just yet, but I'm always watching for it in the forecast. Here is Yakima. The average temperature for today is 58. You can see they start moving towards the low and mid 60s as you get into mid-April there. Their high temperature is 80 degrees. That's the first 80 degree day at uh, Yakima of the year was there 1960. So that's the earliest they've ever hit 80 degrees. And you can see 1955, they actually got 3.6 inches of snow during that system that moved through here in late March. And you can see they get snowfall all the way out through early April, but it drops off really rapidly there. These are record high snowfall amounts for the day. So it is warming up in eastern Washington. Things are starting to grow over there. So checking out the rest of the country, some wind advisories and some wind, uh, some fire danger, sorry, across the northern plains there and relatively quiet around the rest of the country. So this is for Southern California. You're talking about mountains, one to three inches of rain, gusts 40 to 50. So some pretty dynamic weather up there for Southern California. The valley and coast, um, half an inch to an inch and a half, gusts 25 to 40. So they're going to turn into Seattle for a day down there. <clears throat> and as you can see, that's a pretty big deal down there, really. I lived down there for a few months uh, one year, and it is a big deal when they get this kind of rain down there. It really slows things down. And, you know, the freeways and the traffic is built for a nice dry pavement. So if you slow it down a little bit, the traffic gets really nasty down there. So heads up, there's a chance of thunderstorms down there for Monday, and this is for mainly during the day, late Sunday into the day Monday. So here we're taking a look at 18,000 foot, 500 millibar heights, kind of shows where the cold air aloft is. And you can see this cold arc, it kind of pinched off here and form a cutoff low, even though it does kind of keep with the jet stream a bit, but you can see that cold air aloft is really gonna bring some dynamic weather for the higher terrain for Southern California and the mountains of the Sierras. And Maybe up through Vegas as well, too. We'll have to watch out for that. And then you can see our system reach Pacific Northwest Wednesday. It's going to bring some cold air behind that with some thunderstorm potential. I should mention there also is some thunderstorm potential for the area on Sunday as a system, kind of this trough opens up over the West Coast. So there is some thunderstorm potential for the Pacific Northwest um, as we go into Sunday afternoon. We'll have to watch out for that. And checking out precipitation totals, you can see mainly BC is targeted with that atmospheric river or very weak atmospheric river. Cascades get their share here too. And some of the higher terrain for Eastern Oregon, the Rockies through Idaho and Montana get a bit. Um, you can see Washington kind of gets left out, especially the lowlands. This has kind of been trending downwards as we've been going here. And you can see Southern California and the coastal ranges all the way through uh, San Francisco to Los Angeles down towards the Baja Peninsula of Mexico there gets some pretty good precip mounts and so do the Sierras and even into Nevada there. So interesting system moving in here. And this is CAPE, convective available potential energy. You can see it associated with that low pressure system moving towards California. And it does bring some potential down here for Southern California as they go through the day and on into the evening of Monday. And really this entire trough, there's probably going to be some thunderstorms somewhere along the higher terrain and possible coastal regions here for Southern California on the day of Monday. 
And as we go ahead and jump right into the European here, this kind of shows, I just wanted to highlight that cold air as it gets moved through Southern California. Here's this trough opens up along the West Coast, and that's what brings that dynamic system there. Now, here comes our system on Wednesday. This might bring a strong frontal system with it and some cold air behind it, possible convergent zone activity in the wake of it. We'll watch out for that closely. And then the European shows another one coming through the following weekend as well. So active pattern looks like it's going to continue. There might be some nice days in between, though, with these transient ridges that move through and bring some warm conditions, maybe up into the lower 60s for some of the portions of the western state and and warmer for eastern portions. Looks like some lower 70s is possible coming up th through this next week for portions of eastern Washington. So if you want to escape some of the cooler weather, it's it's best to go east. Now, here's looking at yesterday's European run. You can see that precipitation starting. That warm front lifts quickly on the day Sunday. And the, the precipitation still hangs around though, all the way through the day Monday as a stronger system really brings some snow for the higher terrain of Southern California. And you see the entire storm system move through the Intermountain West here as we go through into next week. Here comes that system Wednesday. You can see it's going to bring some mountain snows too all the way through the Olympics, the Cascades up through the um, coastal range of British Columbia here too. And maybe even a little bit of precip for eastern Washington and then some snow for the Rockies as we go there. But there's going to be some cold air in the way. Kind of see the convergence zone signature here Wednesday night. And then if we go into the next uh, weekend here, you can see the European kind of highlighting that next frontal system coming through there. But that's pretty far out. That can change at this point. But you can see the deep low over the Gulf of Alaska and the general active pattern continuing over the Pacific Ocean here in our La Nina winter. <clears throat> Here's 10,000 foot temperatures here, and you can see this cold air. It's spilled out over the Gulf of Alaska. Here's Washington, Oregon, California, Alaska, and you'll see this cold air kind of get pinched off and brought down towards Southern California, and the entire trough opens up over the West Coast, maybe bringing a thunderstorm for the area on Sunday, maybe even Monday too with this cold air around. And then you'll see our frontal system swing through with this low of cold air on the day Wednesday. And then we get maybe a transient ridge and then some more cold air for next week. And as uh, there's some more cold air behind on the Aleutians and back over the Gulf of Alaska, it continues to be active over the Gulf of Alaska. So checking out the Cape, this is for Sunday night on the NAM. You can see there's some instability around, especially over the higher terrain and some of the areas, higher terrain, eastern Washington, Oregon, Idaho. So we might get a rumble of thunder or two out here, mainly south of Seattle on the higher terrains. But this could actually happen in the Willamette Valley here, too. We'll watch that as we get closer to this event on Sunday. Here's the European. Also shows that instability mostly for the Oregon Cascades, Willamette Valley, and some portions of eastern Oregon. And the European will show always shows less cape than, like for example, high-resolution model like the NAM 3KM. So checking out, this is going on to the extended even further. You can see that trough digging out over the west coast there, transient ridge before our next frontal system on the day Wednesday for the Pacific Northwest. And there's some chance of severe weather across the plains here coming up next week too. Um, the European has been painting a different picture. The GFS is a little more um, favorable for severe weather across the Southern Plains, but the European has not been showing that quite as much, but it, there probably would be a severe weather solution, but we're waiting for the models to line up a little bit more before we concentrate on that. And then you can see an, it is troughing continues over the Intermountain West and maybe on into early April to be some more severe weather across there. But anyway, as we can see, we put this into motion here and this would be the next weekend. The, the ensembles are kind of bringing this trough down across the West Coast here. And the regular operational one had more of a frontal system moving through the area. So you can see some model differences there. But you see the general troughiness over the Gulf of Alaska is going to spawn systems and bring them up towards our way and continue our active weather probably in through early April as you see another trough dig towards California and Oregon here as these low pressure systems remain active over the Gulf of Alaska. <clears throat> now this is just to show some temperatures we can expect for today. See, it warms up nicely into the 50s for Western Washington, Oregon, Eastern Washington, getting into the mid 60s today. Check out some of the areas down uh, for Central Southern Oregon, getting up into the 70s today. Pretty nice day. And we get into Saturday, and you'll notice the temperatures drop off a bit through western Washington. The clouds are going to be with us with this system. But much warmer through the Willamette Valley is going to be in a southwest flow and probably up into the mid-60s for some areas, up towards 70 degrees in eastern Washington. So a nice day to head east into eastern Washington. Eastern Oregon looks nice for the most part, too. A little bit cooler for the higher terrain, as always. 
And moving into Sunday here too, check out Eastern Washington it warms up nicely into the low 70s. And you can see the clouds hanging around portions of Western Washington's precip continues. But check out Portland, looks like a pretty warm day coming up there Sunday up for 60s even possible. Here's for Seattle Tacoma, like we said, it's around 53 degrees is the average temperature. So you see we're right around average and some days below average here as these systems are moving through. You can see that frontal system move through Wednesday. It cools us down through Thursday, Friday as we bounce back, maybe a transient ridge at some point next weekend before another strong frontal system would come through the area. Now looking at Yakima, you can see generally warmer as their average temperatures are generally higher at this time of the year, but then they cool down as that system moves through in midweek here and it kind of remains a little bit uh, cooler than what we are going to get this weekend. It should be nice and warm over there in eastern Washington, mid upper 60s, even the low 70s some areas. And here's, for example, Yakima, not expecting much precip. You can see uh, on in through, what, Monday night, maybe a little bit. But for the most part, very light precipitation amounts east of the Cascades. Seattle, you can see our system move through. And then our stronghold frontal system will move through Wednesday. Not a big rainmaker, but there is going to be a convergent zone activity probably behind us. So it's going to enhance some of these amounts depending on where that sets up. And then you'll see on into next week in a potentially stronger front still as that storm train remains active on in through the future here on the European models. The Gulf of Alaska troughing is going full steam. So just wanted to give you guys another update today and we'll see if how the weather does. We'll look at that uh, troughing coming in Sunday and the thunderstorm potential coming up this weekend and on into next week again, either tomorrow or the day after that, depending on if I do a video tomorrow. So get outside and enjoy the weather today. It should get up almost towards 60 degrees today. Check out the high clouds, maybe some mountain wave activity, get your cameras out and head off to Eastern Washington to this weekend. If you want some warmer weather compared to Western Washington. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.